We continue today with chapter 14, The Light of Communication. The journey that we undertake together is the exchange of dark for light, of ignorance for understanding. Nothing you understand is fearful. It is only in darkness and in ignorance that you perceive the frightening and shrink away from it to further darkness. And yet it is only the hidden that can terrify, not for what it is, but for its hiddenness. The obscure is frightening because you do not understand its meaning. If you did, it would be clear and you would be no longer in the dark. Nothing has hidden value, for what is hidden cannot be shared and so its value is unknown. The hidden is kept apart, but value always lies in joint appreciation. What is concealed cannot be loved, and so it must be feared. The quiet light in which the Holy Spirit dwells within you is merely perfect openness in which nothing is hidden and therefore nothing is fearful. Attack will always yield to love if it is brought to love, not hidden from it. There is no darkness that the light of love will not dispel, unless it is concealed from love's beneficence. What is kept apart from love cannot share its healing power because it has been separated off and kept in darkness. The sentinels of darkness watch over it carefully, and you who made these guardians of illusion out of nothing are now afraid of them. Would you continue to give imagined power to these strange ideas of safety? They are neither safe nor unsafe. They do not protect. Neither do they attack. They do nothing at all, being nothing at all. As guardians of darkness and of ignorance look to them only for fear, for what they keep obscure is fearful. But let them go, and what was fearful will be so no longer. Without protection of obscurity, only the light of love remains, for only this has meaning and can live in light. Everything else must disappear. Death yields to life simply because destruction is not true. The light of guiltlessness shines guilt away because, when they are brought together, the truth of one must make the falsity of its opposite perfectly clear. Keep not guilt and guiltlessness apart, for your belief that you can have them both is meaningless. All you have done by keeping them apart is loose their meaning by confusing them with each other. And so you do not realize that only one means anything. The other is wholly without sense of any kind. You have regarded the separation as a means for breaking your communication with your Father. The Holy Spirit reinterprets it as a means of re-establishing what was not broken, but has been made obscure. All things you made have use to Him for His most holy purpose. He knows you are not separate from God, but He perceives much in your mind that lets you think you are. All this and nothing else would He separate from you. The power of decision, which you made in place of the power of creation, He would teach you how to use on your behalf. You who made it to crucify yourself must learn of him how to apply it to the holy cause of restoration. You who speak in dark and devious symbols do not understand the language you have made. It has no meaning, for its purpose is not communication, but rather the disruption of communication. If the purpose of language is communication, how can this tongue mean anything? Yet even this strange and twisted effort to communicate through not communicating holds enough of love to make it meaningful 
if its interpreter is not its maker. You who made it are but expressing conflict from which the Holy Spirit would release you. Leave what you would communicate to Him. He will interpret it to you with perfect clarity, for He knows with whom you are in perfect communication. You know not what you say, and so you know not what is said to you. Yet your interpreter perceives the meaning in your alien language. He will not attempt to communicate the meaningless, but he will separate out all that has meaning, dropping off the rest and offering your true communication to those who would communicate as truly with you. You speak two languages at once, and this must lead to unintelligibility. Yet if one means nothing and the other everything, only that one is possible for purposes of communication, the other but interferes with it. The Holy Spirit's function is entirely communication. He therefore must remove whatever interferes with communication in order to restore it. Therefore keep no source of interference from his sight, for he will not attack your sentinels, but bring them to him and let his gentleness teach you that in the light, they are not fearful, and cannot serve to guard the dark doors behind which nothing at all is carefully concealed. We must open all doors, and let the light come streaming through. There are no hidden chambers in God's temple. Its gates are open wide to greet His Son. No one can fail to come where God has called him if he close not the door himself upon his father's welcome. And from the workbook, Lesson 110 I am as God created me. We will repeat today's idea from time to time. For this one thought would be enough to save you and the world, if you believe that it is true. Its truth would mean that you have made no changes in yourself that have reality, nor changed the universe so that what God created was replaced by fear and evil, misery and death. If you remain as God created you, fear has no meaning, evil is not real, and misery and death do not exist. Today's idea is therefore all you need to let complete correction heal your mind and give you perfect vision that will heal all the mistakes that any mind has made at any time or place. It is enough to heal the past and make the future free. It is enough to let the present be accepted as it is. It is enough to let time be the means for all the world to learn escape from time, and every change that time appears to bring in passing by. If you remain as God created you, appearances cannot replace the truth, health cannot turn to sickness, nor can death be substitute for life, or fear for love. All this has not occurred if you remain as God created you. You need no thought but just this one to let redemption come to light the world and free it from the past. In this one thought is all the past undone, the present saved to quietly extend into a timeless future. If you are as God created you, then there has been no separation of your mind from His, no split between your mind and other minds, and only unity within your own. The healing power of today's idea is limitless. It is the birthplace of all miracles, the great restorer of the truth to the awareness of the world. Practice today's idea with gratitude, this is the truth that comes to set you free. This is the truth that God has promised you. 
This is the word in which all sorrow ends. For your five-minute practice periods, begin with this quotation from the text. I am as God created me. His son can suffer nothing, and I am his son. Then, with this statement firmly in your mind, try to discover your mind, the Self, who is the Holy Son of God himself. Seek him within you, who is Christ in you, the Son of God and brother to the world, the Savior who has been forever saved, with power to save whoever touches him, however lightly, asking for the word that tells him he is brother unto him. You are as God created you. Today honor yourself. Let graven images you made to be the Son of God, instead of what he is, be worshipped not today. Deep in your mind, the Holy Christ in you is waiting your acknowledgement as you. And you are lost and do not know yourself while he is unacknowledged and unknown. Seek him today and find him. He will be your savior from all idols you have made. For when you find him, you will understand how worthless are your idols, and how false the images which you believed were you. Today we make a great advance to truth by letting idols go, and opening our hands and hearts and minds to God today. We will remember him throughout the day with thankful hearts and loving thoughts for all who meet with us today. For it is thus that we remember him, and we will say that we may be reminded of his Son, our Holy Self, the Christ in each of us. I am as God created me. Let us declare this truth as often as we can. This is the word of God that sets you free. This is the key that opens up the gate of heaven and that lets you enter in the peace of God and His eternity. Amen.